Today we're learning to fight with ukulele and chains. So, a couple of weeks ago, Brad and I sat down for a meeting, discussed what we wanted to talk about next. We decided we were going to talk about home self-defense, i.e. how to protect yourself when someone attacks you at home. Yeah, these would be weapons or defense objects that could be within reach or barely already in your hand that you could use to kind of keep the perpetrator or attacker away from you and create more time and space. So, to make it more fun, we're taking firearms, kitchen knives, all of the standard weapons off the table. We're going to talk about various things you might have around your house that aren't necessarily weapons. Right now. Right now. Yeah. I think it's important that we establish some ground rules on what defines a weapon of, as being good versus bad. You mean in the house? For in the house. Defense. Yes, home defense. What's a good home defense weapon versus a bad one? Because there's some bad ones. Right. Um, I think the first one is the ease of use, right? Yeah. Nothing complex. Yeah. I think if you go for, like, certain coat hangers, you know, people think that because it's sharp, they couldn't be sharp. They're kind of difficult to use, right? It's not necessarily a bludgeoning weapon. Could but break, hurt yourself. Exactly. You know. So, like, ease of use, I think, is one that's important. Um, if it's practically around you. Like yeah. Something that's not very odd, but, you know, could be lying there. Right. If, if, you, if most people are going to have it, that's what we're going to talk about today. It might even be in your hand at the moment. Exactly. Or on your person, as some things will be today. And then, I think for the purpose of this video, uh, how cool is it? Ease of use, likelihood of being in the house, and also just the coolness factor. Cool factor. That's what we're going to be judging on today. So, let's get started. Broom. I think this is the standard for someone breaks into my house. I get ready to beat him to death with a broom or a mop or some kind of cleaning, cleaning object that's longer than your arm, right? Right. And while this is nice for keeping space, right, because distance is what's really going to give us some time here, it's also a staff form. I mean, there's lots of ways to add force and torque to this because you've got two hands on it. Yeah. Historically, a lot of staff or spear weapons come from farming tools, come from cleaning tools, because it's things that people had in their hands all the time anyway. Um, what, nunchuck and commas? Nunchuck, commas, it's all just standard implements that people had, so... This does count as a spear. Yes. In that this is going to be the thing you're going to use to brush in their face. Yes. They're blinded, you win. So what do you think? Is the broom our best choice for home self-defense? It's usually my best choice for home self-defense. Now let me ask you this, is this our coolest choice for home self-defense? By no means. We Check got, out what I brought. We got plenty of other toys. Paint roller. Trim. Trim. I was doing trim. So the thing is that when someone has something else in their hand, it draws their eyes to it. It just creates more between us. This guy has to add this to his math. Right. If I if Brad comes out and I just see his hand or see him, you know, without anything, it's like this is pretty much equal and maybe I have a weapon that he doesn't have, so I'm I'm putting myself in advantage. The minute he puts something in his hand, that communicates to me, you want a party. And also, I don't know what that can do to me, right? Depends on the color of the paint. I think something people need to understand with self-defense is that it's not necessarily like I'm walking in here, like, let's do this. And I'm going to finish you off. Exactly. It's more like I want to, I don't even know you're home most of the time, right? I'm hoping you're not. I'm walking in, I want to take your stuff, and you happen to be there, and the minute you put up any kind of resistance with your paint roller, now I have a problem, and my goal is not to take you out, but to get out, right? Now, if it's some kind of, like, mafia hit, then I don't know what to tell you. You've made some wrong choices in your life. But in general, if someone raises their weapon, a paint roller at me, I'm already halfway out the door because I don't want that resistance. So broom, not quite what we're looking for. Paint roller, cooler, but maybe not the most useful. What do you got? I brought one that I think everybody has almost in every single room of their house, probably on their person. Your shoes. Bad odor. See, we haven't covered this yet. Attacking people with odor? Brilliant. I can get people to run away. I mean, look at the skunk. You could use these things as kind of like ninja stars fling them at your opponent, which is a thing you can do, but what's the problem with that? It's a one and done. If right. you don't hit them and you don't finish them, you're done. You're yeah, done. This, this actually I think will turn you into like a championship boxer right away because you and I are here and I start doing that and we start, I start gauging your reaction, right? And then I realize, oh, he flinches to the right every time I do this, then I throw it farther right, right? There it is. If I miss with this though, now I have nothing in my hand. So it's a cool idea, uh, but maybe not the best. A towel. Huh? That almost seems worse than a shoe. Okay. What if you had a towel? 
Like you throw it on his head and blind him? Well, I was kind of thinking about this one. Shoo-pah! Oh. It is a lot of taunting and stuff. And remember, yeah, it's going again. for the eyes is nice. Now, that doesn't mean everybody can just uh, tear up little boxes with this. Horribly doing this isn't yeah, going to be a bad thing. Yeah, if you're just doing that, it's boom, right? I actually really like the idea of the towels. Um, again, historically in martial arts, they have a lot of cloth, silks that they use, the sarong that they use in Filipino martial arts. This this has some historical basis on it. I think just the, the margin for user error is too big, but I think there's something else we can use in the same vein that's a little bit easier to use. You think it's easier to use? I think it's easier to use and- I got something that's easier to use too. See, everybody's got a uh, pet leash. Dog leash. So, uh, the thing I thought that this was better, I mean, we were talking about the uh, the rat tail whip. Yeah. But um, this one definitely has like a weighted end. Mm-hmm. I'm not hitting you with the impact of the cloth. I'm hitting you now with the impact of the metal, right? Yep. And this gives me more length than the cloth will, cloth will give me. And again, this doesn't have to be a leash. I like the leash because it has this heavy little knot on the end of it, but so does a belt, right? Like an actual belt belt. belt. Right, exactly. I like this a lot, definitely a lot more than the towel. And um, towel can't do this. Towel can't do that. I also like what the leash implies, right? You have a pet? You have a dog. Why isn't the dog doing anything? Exactly. Now, Why am I defending myself? So what do you think? Does this get the vote of best weapon? Best improv weapon? I, I liked it. I wanted to be in the collection, but I'm still hanging out with a broom when it comes to my favorite. So far the best one, right? Yeah, because everyone has a broom, not everyone has a pet. Yeah. If you're, if you're allergic to dogs, I guess you just let your house get invaded. I think we need to talk about the one that uh, brought them here. I brought the ukulele because it'll be easier to show on camera, but this could be any instrument, right? This could be guitar, bass, whatever. Um, I think this is a good option because you can beat someone to death with it, but... Did you just say you wanted me to beat someone to death with my bass? That's my guitar. <laughs> yes, that's kind of the issue, right? Like, this was a gift for me. I don't necessarily want to break it. Right. I don't mind if I break my dog leash, I don't mind if I break my broom, but there might be some sentimental or like monetary value to your instrument. But that being said, again, like I think this is a good choice. It's got a heavy far end and a handle at the beginning. It's not quite a one and done, but I'll right. tell you, if it destroys itself, you probably scored good points. Yeah. If you're not good at ukulele, you can always just play a little bit for them. Maybe they'll just leave. <laughs> ukulele might have my vote for most interesting weapon. Like I said, you come out and you see me swinging this thing like a madman, wearing a, a cast iron pot on my head, you probably don't want to mess with me. I didn't want you to be there at all, but not like that. Exactly. But in the intro, you had some chains, so... The Ghost Rider weapon. The Ghost Rider weapon. These are really painful when they're on fire. So, I was thinking that this was kind of neat for, you know, uh, swinging it around until I swung it once, and this is not really practical. It's kind of too cumbersome. Yeah. Even throwing it might tire me out. Yeah. It has some use. Like, you can whip someone with that, and it'll definitely hurt. Not saying it won't. And in fact, everything we've talked about today, if you hit somebody with it, will hurt. Will but, hurt. We're here uh, to get more time and more defense. I don't think that's, that's probably not the best option. Every time you swing anything at anybody, if it's solid enough, it will hurt them. It's just how easy it is to hurt them with that. And also, how likely are you to actually get it there? You know, the chains... Unless I guess you're fighting in like a Billie Jean music video, you're probably not going to be able to use that very effectively. What about uh, workout equipment? Same kind of thing, right? Same kind of thing depending on the weight, right? Like, you have a dumbbell here, that's 15 pounds, like, how comfortably can you swing 15 pounds around? Now, if we do some ninjutsu, instead of using them as like a bludgeoning tool or a shuriken, throw them on the ground, then, or like as you run to another room, throw them on the ground, now you have foot traps. Which is kind of a joke, but also like, depending on the weight of the dumbbell. That it, can be done. Yeah. Okay. I brought one more that I'm super proud of. You have some things. I brought the pot lid, pan lid. Now, you might be inclined to think Frisbee, right? One right, and done. one and done. Right, but. Handle. Look at that. I got a Captain America shield right here. Now, you come in, I'm out here ready to fight you, you start throwing punches. Boom, boom, right? Hit. You don't even want to hit it. Don't even want to throw. Right. And that's if you catch it on the knuckle, right? Right. I could also use it like as a bash to hit you with. Yep. Or cut you open with. I think this is a beautiful weapon, improvised weapon for self-defense. Also regarding the uh, pan lid, let's put like situationally, 
I'm in my house and you come in and attack me, you push me over, I reach and grab whatever I can grab, any angle I hit this, hit you with this is gonna be devastating for you, right? Some of these things, like you kind of have to have the right angle to hit with. You have to be able to create the right whip for the leash and the towel. Um, obviously the dumbbell, you don't necessarily wanna grab by the, by the bell. But with this thing, I can grab it by the handle, hit you across with the ridge, bash you with this side, hit you with the handle, right? Like this is dangerous from every single aspect. And I don't know necessarily that you're gonna be able to do anything to break it. No. Yeah. That's, that's the issue with a lot or of Or get things. it away from you. Exactly. Once I have this on it, how are you getting it off my hand? I have to basically give it to you. That's something that most all these other things don't have a, involved with them. I like that. Yeah. I li I, the idea of a handle, I really like. So, Brad, of the nine things that you and I brought today, which of these do you think is the best option for improvised home self-defense? I keep in mind I'm not just talking about most useful. I'm also talking about kind of the coolest toy that we brought in. I I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go with the dog leash. Yeah? Yeah. I think that it's easiest to use. Yeah. There's a lot of things we can do with it, mm -hmm. and a lot of people have one. Right. And I like the implication again of you have a dog. Yeah, you might even have a dog. Right. <laughs> you don't have to have a dog to have one of these. I don't know what you're into, but now, again, like, we're calling it a dog leash now, but really it's any kind of rope with a heavy end to it, right? Like, this could also be, like, a, a power cord or something, you know, anything that has, like, a weight to it. I didn't think I'd come away from the broom. I like broom. It's definitely a strong second, but leash. The broom got swept away. Uh, my vote's coming. My vote's got to go to this guy. <laughs> I, like the, I like the Captain America shield. We know. Yeah, I like everything about this thing. Even with the leash, like, you swing it at me, and I get a hold of it, now we're wrestling for getting it out, or I can pull you to me, right? We're wrestling for control now. Whereas it's gonna be harder for you to get this off of me if I have my hand in the handle, right? Can't get it off. Exactly, so that's my vote goes to this one. We have one more thing in this room for sure that I think most houses don't have, but should have. And it's the best for self-defense, period. And it's, and it's not a gun. And it's not a gun. And it's not a dog. And it's not a dog, not a knife, it's not a lightsaber. It is the fire extinguisher. So you're gonna hit him with it. It's like a one and done. You're you can throw it. You can throw it. You can hit him with it again, like the aerosol can. You can spray him with it. Oh yeah. Also, it's not just a weapon. It's a self-defense tool. It is because suddenly there's a spark that goes off in my house. Something lights up. I could put it out with the fire extinguisher. Oh, you mean if your house was attacked by something other than a human? Exactly, because self-defense doesn't just mean defending mean, yourself from a human. Exactly, it means defending yourself against. Whatever. Whatever. I want to see what happens when I hit it. I don't want to hit it. Okay. Uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Mm. Nope. Yeah. That's a great weapon to hit someone with. Now, here, hold this. I want to bang my head on it. <laughs> so I think if we have to go by place order, this gets first place by a long shot, right? Long shot. Useful as a weapon. It's useful as a tool. It's just useful. I want to carry one around with me. Yeah. Like, they need to be making these into a holster. <laughs> Second and third place, toss up between lid and leash, right? Luckily, we can use them at the same time. Exactly. You don't have to choose. It is not Sophie's choice. You can have both. I think the ultimate lesson here is it really doesn't matter. I mean, it does kind of matter. Don't grab your keys. But it doesn't super matter what you put in your hands because it's not the tool. It's you. It you is. have to be the weapon. I like today's selection. I'm interested to see if we do this again, what else we can come up with. Yep. Go rummaging around your garage and let me know what you got laying around. See yeah. if uh, maybe you got an idea for us. Drop a comment. Let us know what you find. That being said, you want to try the outro? It's a long one. No. If you're looking for a channel that combines the practicality of combat sports with the reality of self-defense and the fun of traditional martial arts, then please be sure to subscribe, tap the notification bell, like, share, and leave a comment. All that support really helps me out. As always, you guys, this has been Brad and Rob from Combat Self-Defense. I want to thank you for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done. And we'll see you next time.